Jesus Brother Ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to be home. This is my home. Praise God. In Christ Jesus, no black, no white. Thank God for Pastor Mark. <laughs> I stay in Pastor Mark's house. He does not treat me differently. He does not treat me like a black person. He treats me like his son. Amen. And um, whenever I come here, I relax here in this church. Praise God. Well, I bring to you greetings from Jesus Brethren Ministries, Abba, Nigeria. I'm greetings from my family, anyway. All of you know my family. We are a family of six. I have four children, plus me and my wife, six. They have a brother that is still under my charge. Amen. So they're all greeting you. I told them I'm going to U.S. I said, greet Pastor Mark. Greet uh, Chris, Cleveland Christian Fellowship. Probably they'll be listening to me now. Uh, if you check that Facebook, you may see one or two of them listening to me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for bringing me here. Lord, you said the entrance of your word gives light. Yes. Father, let your light shine in our souls as we hear your voice, as we listen to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank God I've been feeding from this pulpit. I, I don't miss, anytime I miss the Facebook Preaching from this pulpit, I will always go back to see what has been said. Thank God for Pastor Mark. Um, he fits me. Thank God for Pastor John. Um, let me not go far. Let, let's turn to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. Early this year in Jesus Brother Ministries, God started dealing with us on the way he magnifies his people. Magnification. We want God to magnify us we want God to lift us up. God has set certain things for us to do for us to receive upliftment from him. Joshua chapter 3, I read from verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. When Moses passed, God called Joshua and said, Joshua, come. This day will I begin to magnify you. This day, God is not a procrastinating God. God does not procrastinate his blessings upon us. He does not postpone it. God said, this today I will begin to magnify you 
in the sight of all Israel so that they will know the purpose for the magnification is so that they will know, Israel will know that as God was with Moses, so he will be with Joshua. Let's go back to chapter 1. Chapter 1 from verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the soul of your foot shall tread upon, that, I, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and all the great sea, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee. I will not forsake thee. Praise the Lord. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee. I will not forsake thee. The first chapter one was God's personal dealing with Joshua. But where we read from chapter three, God was ready. Praise God. Okay, let's go to chapter 4, verse 14. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. God magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel so that they feared Joshua as they feared Moses. God, mag God magnified Joshua so that Israel will know that God exists. He magnified Joshua for his name's sake, not for Joshua's sake. Because he called Joshua to take over from Moses. Hallelujah. I work in a bank. I am here today, not because I lost my job, but I took leave yes. from work. And before, uh, before my leave was permitted, was approved, I wrote a handover note to the person who will be acting on my behalf. You always write a handover note Look at my job schedule. Look, see what, what and what I've done. This and this is pending, and so on. And then you hand it over to the next person. That person is expected to act on your behalf, to improve on what you are doing. And so that's the case here. When you are handed over a work that has been going on, you are expected to improve on it. Don't take your mind so far about Joshua. Let's get to Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, I read from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name. Sorry, I'm, look, I'm reading Mark. I'm reading Mark, not Matthew. But Mark is involved too. Matthew 28. Verse 18. Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. And lo, I am with you always. God, God told Joshua, as you do this work Moses was doing, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And Jesus is saying, handing over his authority to his disciples, yeah. go into all the world. Do this work. As you do this work, lo, I will be with you unto the end of the age. Yes. Now, the question is, who is handing over to you? Who are you taking over from? By taking over from Jesus, Joshua took over from Moses, in fact, I would say that Moses did not hand over properly in person. God, God, God called Joshua to take, to take over from Moses. And Moses took, uh, Joshua took over from Moses. And God said, as you do this work Moses was doing, take, my, take the children of Israel to the land I promised them. I will be with you as I was with, with Moses. And Jesus said, Go into all the world. Continue this work I am doing. As you do it, lo, I will be with you unto the end of the age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God being with you is dependent on the work you are doing. What work are we doing today? Are we doing what Jesus wants us to do? Preaching the gospel to every Christian. Winning souls into the kingdom of God. The Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We are given the ministry of reconciliation in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18. God, Jesus handed over to us the ministry of reconciliation that will reconcile men unto himself. That's what Jesus handed over to us. To win souls to the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what I see in, ch in churches today, in Nigeria. And I believe here too. The church is living 
in the land of no worries. You remember Lion King, Hakuna Matata? Yes. <laughs> That's where the church is living, in the land of Hakuna Matata. No worries. When King Mufasa, Mufasa died, the uncle of Simba chased him out of the kingdom, pursued him out, wanted to kill him. Now that the king is dead, it's late for you whether you'll be alive. Say, run away. And he has to run for his life and run to a land where he wouldn't worry. He was feeding well, doing things where well, no worries. Being simple. Remember, God wants us not to be at ease in Zion. So Simba was at ease in the land of Akuna Matata. No worries. Nothing is disturbing him. He's enjoying blessings, eating well. That's the stage of the church today. Most people in the church, they are eating well, enjoying God's blessings, enjoying good messages. Enjoy good messages from Pastor Mark and from Pastor John. Growing in the spirit, developing their faith, knowing how to get what they want from God by faith. But not rising up to the challenge of taking over the world. Jesus said, occupy till I come. Occupy means to take over. We are supposed to take over the world by preaching the gospel. By winning souls, we are supposed to take over the world. But because we are living in the land of no worries, in the land of Hakuna Matata, we, we are not pushing forward. And the devil is sending his people to push forward. LBTQ, lesbian, homosexual, they are all pushing forward. While we are in the church, not pushing forward. We have to rise up to our challenge. We're enjoying God's blessings. It's high time we get up. So Simba was in that land of Hakuna Matata until he was found by his sister, Lola. And his sister told him what is going on in the kingdom. At a time, he has to take up his, his, his responsibility. He rose up, said, I'm going to take over my responsibility. So he went and took over. And everything in the kingdom became fine. The book of Proverbs warns us about being simple. Simplicity. We ought not to be simple. Simplicity means nothing worries you. Nothing, nothing bothers you. You are complacent. That's simplicity. We need to take charge. We need to preach this gospel. We need to fill this church with people. My father will always say, it is sheep that multiplies sheep. The shepherd does not multiply sheep. It is sheep that multiplies sheep. As members of this church, we are supposed to move out, go out, Put it in your plans to preach. 
Let it be in your schedule. Hallelujah. Let it be in your schedule. I know, I know everybody is busy in America, busy, busy, doing work because you want to pay bills, you want to do this. Everybody is busy. We are busy that we will neglect an aspect of what should keep us busy. We should also be busy with God's work. Hallelujah. As we walk in God's vineyard, God walks in our vineyard. Let it be part of our schedule. Let it be part of our schedule to preach the gospel. Is it daily schedule or weekly schedule? Don't make it monthly schedule. <laughs> it should be a daily schedule or a weekly schedule. And as we do it, the Bible says, God will be with us. Yes. And when God is with us, your business will prosper, your family will blossom, God will lift you up, God will magnify you in many areas. Because we are doing the work. Hallelujah. God wants to magnify us. He wants to magnify us in many areas. As he magnified Joshua. As he magnified Moses. As he magnified Solomon. Mention them. Those big, big names. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry Jesus has handed over to us. To reconcile men unto himself. And as we do it, Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark preached a message here. He says, God's ways are higher than our ways. And if we want to go higher, you must follow the higher way. And that is God's way. God's way to lift us up is to do his work. That's one of God's ways to lift us up. To do his work. As a believer, our power lies in number one. Knowing the word of God and obeying the word of God. Number two, prayers. Communication with God. And number three, Winning souls, preaching the gospel. That is where our power lies. These three things. The Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. That preach the good news. God wants to fill this place. And he wants to magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He was going about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The same work he has handed over to us to go about do good to go about preach the gospel. I know we might, we, might, we might not use the old method of preaching the gospel. As the society changes, we change with the society. On Facebook, make friends with the aim of preaching the gospel to the person. Hey, you chat the person up and preach the gospel, type in on Facebook. Join social medias with the aim of reaching out. 
to the unbelieving world. You may not, you may not organize crusade these days and stand out there and use microphone to preach, but there are many other ways, many other avenues to reach out to people. Hallelujah. Some churches in Nigeria, do you know what they do? I'm talking about churches. They recycle believers. A believer will leave this church and join another church, and the, the other church will be rejoicing. Yes, I've won, I've won so. No, you didn't win that so. That so some, is somebody's ship. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't win that so. It's somebody else's ship. There are many people who are not yet born again around us. Use your mind, scan your, your friends around and plan. We need to be, we need, we need to do it objectively. We need to be intentional about it. Put it in your schedule. Be intentional about it. Make plans of how to go out there and get them. It's a serious business, so. Because that's the work God has committed to our hands. Hallelujah. We should stop relaxing in God's house. Don't relax. Jesus said, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. That's the yoke Jesus wants you to take. When you take his yoke, you, you drop your yoke. Your burden is heavy. He knows how to take care of it. But take this burden from Christ. He is depending on us to get those that are lost. Amen. Amen. He is depending on us. And of course, that will be one of the things that will make him to say, Thou good and faithful servant. Come to my right hand and stay. You need to prove yourself faithful by being intentional about it. Map our strategies to win souls. And as we do it, God will lift us up. As we do it, God will magnify us. So that the people will know that God is with us. And when people know that God is with us, guess what? They will fear us. They will respect us. They will come running to us. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Shall we stand to our feet, Pastor? I'm true. <laughs> I'm true. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. You can stand up together with me. Praise God. Thank you, Jude. Praise God. That's a good challenge, isn't it? Amen. It is true. It's so very true. I've seen it over and over again. It's, sometimes people are just swapping churches, but we need new blood, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I like so much that I read this years ago, and uh, and. We're all familiar with the scripture that in Mark's gospel, where he's given the great commission, he said, and they went out, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through signs following. And so what we saw was, you know, years and years and years ago, you know, Brother Hagin would point out that he confirms the word 
with signs following. Sometimes the reason people don't have signs following is because they're not preaching the word. And it, but it's also true. If you preach salvation, you know what happens? People get saved. If you preach healing, people get healed. If you preach, preach victory, people walk in victory. So, you know, God confirms his word with a sign. He does not confirm men's traditions and men's ideas and things that aren't even, you know, don't even have anything to do with the Bible. But what I saw a few years ago that was really interesting, <laughs> they went out everywhere, the Lord, work, the Lord working with them, the Lord working with them, the Lord working with them, the Lord working with them. God doesn't work apart from you. He works with you. Amen. So yes, he confirms his word, but if you but but if you're not even but if you're not given the word, there's nothing for him to confirm. I'm sure it's got to be the word, but you got to go so that he can work with you. He doesn't work apart from you. Amen. I mean, nobody's going to get healed on the parking lot of Walmart unless you lay hands on them. The reason I say that is because a few years ago, a man with cancer, dying of cancer, you know, Junior Bryant laid hands on him, and the man was healed right there in the Walmart parking lot. Well, the Lord, he went, he went, see, and God can, he preached the word to him, but he was working with Junior. And, of course, the only way people can get saved is if we share the word with them. Praise God. God will magnify us, lift us up, anoint us. Glory to God. Give us the words to say. So I don't want to re-preach your message, but, but that goes right with that. And then he works with us, not apart from us. Say, God works with me. Not apart from me. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jude. We appreciate it greatly, 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 greatly. God bless you. You're looking good out there. You're dismissed. Thank you, Lord Jesus.